<laughs> yes, sir. It's the day before the day before, man. Birdman, hand rub time, getting charged up in here. We like to welcome you black zoners, man. Come on through. Come on through, man. Bloviate with us right now on this liquid lunch hour right here on Grand Day Baltimore where we bring you more information and we bring the culture, the most inspiration, man, right here on Zone 16 Network. I'm Joseph Garner along with my co-host over there. Damon Williams, look, we both flying the flag today. You got on a Baltimore shirt. I got on a Baltimore shirt. We, 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 we be more out. Greatest city in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is, what is it again? What is it again? You tell me all the time. The greatest city in America. No, 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 no. The other one, the other one is we are the largest city in the richest state. Yes, largest city in, in the richest state of the United now, States. Now I don't know if that, if that still is the case with the state, but it was at one time. Was at one time. So that's our story. We sticking to. We sticking to it. Really? Maryland, Maryland was yeah. the richest state, and we we Biggest we can state. Google. Hey, hey, look, Zonas, if you're out there with us, man, go ahead, Google that, find out. Look, if you're on Instagram right now, because we know we know we get a lot of people over there on the uh, Instagram live, jump on over, man. Come on over to YouTube, type in Z16N or Zone 16 Network, click episode 15, man. We live right now. Come on through. It looks a little better. It doesn't have a. They got that aspect ratio thing. I, I, I can't wait until it gets universal, man. When we on oh, Instagram, yeah, yeah. Oh. We, we it, it it looks like you know YouTube on Instagram. You know. No, okay. Can't okay. wait. Yeah, oh, oh, there we go. There we go. We got good people out there, man. Right fist power, not your left. Giving a shout out to Baltimore in the chat, man. And Baltimore in the chat. So how you feeling today, Dave? Awesome. You know, you good. Every day's a good day, man. Every day is a good day. Above ground is a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, man. Only bad day. It's the day you don't see. All right, man. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I like to hear that. I like to and hear. Thir- Thursdays were always awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Day before the day before is always a special time. Yeah, right? man. We had pizza day in elementary school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sir. You know what I'm saying? saying? We had the Cosby Show, a different world on different Thursday Different world night. on Thursday. I'm and, taking, you know, it's funny you mention that right now. Uh, with my son, I've been taking, since it's the, what is it, 35 years of different world? So I've been something, taking it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, t- I took it to the lab for him. So, you know, just like how when we were in middle school, we were, you know, fantasizing yeah. about Lisa Bonet. I said, all right, let me, let me go ahead and pop that up there so the young man can see. He didn't, he didn't know she was married to Aquaman because, you know, he's young. So he, yeah, he, he's yeah. like, Aquaman? That's Aquaman's wife. I'm like, yeah, that was Aquaman's wife right there. There she is. I mean, mm-hmm. and their daughter was in the last Batman. Nah, I, I, I need to. I need to mention yeah. that to him. I need to mention that to him. Yeah. So wait, we we had uh, Lisa Bonet mm-hmm. and Jasmine Guy the first season, mm-hmm. and um, Kim and, and uh, Freddie they show up the second season. Right? Yeah, yeah. When they were sophomore. Well, yeah, look, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. something I peep. Did you know? A little, a little, a little watching it over again. Whitley was already a sophomore. I think I knew that. Yeah. I think I knew that. So, Whitley, Whitley Gilbert was, was, like, way ahead of, like, when Kim and all of them showed up on campus and all of that kind of stuff. She, Yeah, she she was, like, a junior, senior. She was super senior up there. For real. Jaleesa was, was uh, she's, like, supposed to be, they don't know, they never know how old she is, right? No, they said she was 26. When, uh, so, remember, in the first season, they tried to, it was, it was, they tried to integrate it. Unfortunately, so they had the Before they had Jimmy the Allen took over. yeah they had the white they had the white character on there and uh, told me yep and she was cracking on Jaleesa's age Don Don Lu, AKA Don Lewis Don and she you know she told us she said I'm 26 I I just watched the episode like last week so I know I know all of this did they show her husband her ex husband they showed an episode yet now nah, we haven't gotten that far yet we you we remember, just we just episode, got up right? to we just got up to Rudy came to spend the night. Wow. Remember that? I do. I, I, <laughs> man, my father used to tape all of them. Yeah. So I used to just watch them over and over and over. Again. Yeah. Rudy came and spent the night. That's where we. That's where we I are. Forgot about that episode. Yeah. Yep, that's where we. Well, are. Do you remember who her, who her husband, ex ex husband was? I do not. It was Tommy. Mm. From Martin. From Martin. Yeah. Oh. Tom, oh Thomas okay. Michael Ford. Yeah. Yeah. If you remember, a few of them were in um, Harlem Nights. Yes. Remember, he's the one that they killed. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Now, yep. I don't yep. know if that was before or after. That's before Different World, yep. I think. 
Well, Different World was, so if they're saying 35 years, that was 89. It's definitely before 88, Martin. So it was 88, 89. I'm not sure if Harlem Night, I don't know when. It's around hey, that same time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Zonas, get on it, man. Get on it, man, and find out. Well, yeah, well, yeah. It's Listen. before. It's, I think it's before. I think he's on a different world before he's in Harlem Nights. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Definitely before Martin. We know that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, tip, lot of tidbits, man. We got a lot to talk about today on the show, man, and a lot to get to. He was on New York Undercover, too. Oh. Uh, remember that? Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that episode. <laughs> like bro. that long. Hey, we want to welcome y'all all black men on this Thursday, March 14th out there, man. It is almost quarter of, quarter till the top of the hour out there. You see it's 73 degrees outside. How, how did it feel walking in here when you came into the studio? You felt, did you enjoy, were you enjoying it? The warming up of the weather here? Hey, man, it's a good day for day drinking. So look. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice day out there. I, I rolled over listening to this uh Black Moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. One Look, one of our faithful zoners out there, man, he said Harlem Nights was 1989. We also want to give a big shout out to MJJ, you know what I mean? Because on this March 14th, man, happy, happy born day to Marcus Jones Jr. out there, man. One of, one of our good people out there, man. He's getting 73 degree weather today for, for his born day, man. Feel good out there. And then Friday, they say 77 and 62 on Saturday, so... It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty cool, then. Pretty, pretty good weather now. March is coming in like a, what does they say, a lamb? Isn't that it? I don't, I don't know. You don't know. March Maybe. is coming. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Just go with it. Go with it, man. All right. So, let's get into what y'all, what we came here for, y'all, man. The top stories for the day, man. Today's top information out there in the world. All right, Damon. Now, they talk about the border crisis, all right? Everybody spilling into America over the border. This may be one of the reasons why. All right, I saw this in the news, man. Mexico City, Damon, with nearly 22 million residents, faces a water crisis nearing day zero when the Katsamala system won't supply enough water to locals. All right, now, locals have already endured weeks without running water, businesses, like coffee shops resort to costly water trucks for essentials. The city grapples with high temperatures, exacerbating the situation. And right now, it's, you know, it's been up. They, they get the 80s right now and the 90s, man. They, they already there. All right. A rainwater basin in the city that used to catch all of the rainwater dried up during uh, their drought that they're going through, Damon, and it caught fire. All right. So it's getting getting a little crazy down there. Reduced rainfall over years and population strain led to this dire state per SAC MEX, SACMEX. Affluent areas face water shortages as well. All right, raising concerns over equity and how to get access to water is it's, it's, it's getting a little testy down there in Mexico City. Now, while the government aims to avert day zero, which some claim may come this year when the city itself just dries up and goes out of water. All right, experts warn it's a looming threat they're trying to get away from. So there you go, man. One of the world's most populated cities oh. is nearly out of water. And, uh, you know, America can, North America can definitely uh, feel their pain with the water issues going. Remember, Deion Sanders highlighted the issues going on in Jackson, Mississippi. And, of course, everyone remembers the Flint, Michigan water crisis. All of that stuff, man. And yet, they're building moon bases. Building moon bases. How about that? Going to the they, they, How about they that? got a project going to the moon, and here it is. You have a city on this very planet with 22 million residents that may run out of water soon. A city in North America. Mm-hmm. Well, that Mexico's Central America, right? In that, yeah, yeah, Central America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's all America. It's all America. It's on the continent. Yeah. yeah. Now they're saying that this is insane. Yeah, now these figures, right? There are figures that say up to 40% of the water that's been wasted in the city, Damon, comes from underground leaks. So basically the 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 infrastructure of the city is failing. That's what they're saying. Many of those leaks were caused by variations in uh, pressures of the hydraulic network. This is this is according to SACMEX out there. 
sacked. Crazy stuff. Devil going devil. Mmm. Mmm. All right, well, we talking about crazy, bizarro world news, right? This for all the Chick-fil-A fans out there, man. Boom. Let me pop it up on the screen for you. Chick-fil-A Damon is urging customers to discard any of the Polynesian sauce packets that they may have obtained between February 14th, February 27th, all right, about, about two or three weeks ago, 2024, due to a labeling error. The mislabeled dipping cups may contain wheat and soy allergens instead. Ugh. Some people out there with those with those gluten allergies, man, is going to light them up. And I, I like the Polynesian sauce. That's actually my, one of my favorite sauces. All right. Now, this issue affects 27 states where Chick-fil-A operates, excluding Alaska and Vermont. You know, Did you know that they didn't have Chick-fil-A's in Alaska and Vermont? Um, wheat allergies can trigger severe symptoms, including anaphylaxis. All right, so people can have major issues here if they use the Polynesian sauce. The error was discovered by the sauce maker T. Marzetti Company, prompting Chick-fil-A's cautionary alert. The concern is that these packets might be stored alongside other condiments at home. You know how people do, man. You order your Chinese food, you get your, you get the hot sauce packets from Taco Bell. I got a boatload of them in a the car. You keep them, and you know, you use them. <laughs> Yeah, man, you use them next time, man. So that's and that's what people are worried about. Yeah, so uh, and it could pose a risk to unsuspecting individuals if they purchase their uh, Polynesian sauce or their Chick Fil A nuggets during that time. Uh, the Polynesian sauce is a long-standing favorite dip, like I said, man, for Chick Fil A customers that debuted in the 1980s. Then, for further inquiries, customers can contact Chick Fil A's hotline. All right, listen to this number, fan, at eight six six. 232-2040. Once again, that is 866-232-2040, man. You have to admire the fact that they've actually been honest about it. You know what I'm saying? Chick-fil-A, that they yeah. that they made that error and it could kill you. <laughs> yeah. dipping, in, dipping your nugget into somebody's sauce, man. Pause. You know Wait. what most amazes Pause. me? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> you know what most amazes me about Chick-fil-A? You already know. What's that? They're not open. The fact that they don't open on Sundays, that is, I, I love it. I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not talking about the philosophical reasons why they don't. But the fact that they do it, <laughs> like they did, like, no, nah, we, we're, we're not opening on Sunday, no matter what. Not at all. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Not at all. Hey, Marcus. In a country where no one has conviction, <laughs> you gotta love it. And for them to stick to their guns out yeah. there. Yeah, hey, Mar- Marcus Jones is reminding us, man, that today is also Pi Day, Damon. Did you know yes, that? Yes, he's a math nerd. Yeah, yeah Pi Day yes. out there, man. We put it up on the screen for the people. Make sure if you are here with us, man, enjoying Grand Day Baltimore, man, you go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section, man. If we see, we're going to put it up on the screen so you can participate in the broadcast Apple, right along with us. Apple Pie. Yeah, and then Mar- Mar- the Marcus. Hey, yeah, Marcus was also uh, asking uh, – has the Flint situation been resolved yet? And we know, like you know, Dan, it has not. No. It has not. It just kind of went away. It just kind of went away. And re- remember, we reported on it here. There were water issues here in Baltimore. There was a parasite in the in the water. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, for a while, we couldn't use drinking couldn't, water. Yeah, couldn't use the drinking water. Yeah, because of the parasite. That's what I'm saying, because of the parasite. So. It's too many rich white folks in Maryland for us to really be worried. Man, oh man. It just is. It's too many rich white folks. Crazy stuff. Zonas, crazy stuff. Hey, look. Y'all know what time it is. Time to highlight the Zonas out here. Highlight our sponsors that help make this show go. We'll be right back. See you in a second.
On this vote, the yeas are 352, the nays are 65. One present, two thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Okay. All right, Damon, you just heard it right there, man. That is one of the biggest stories of the day, right there, Damon. TikTok has now officially been bizzamed. <laughs> well, not officially yet. Not officially. The House has overwhelmingly approved, Damon, a bipartisan bill with a vote of 352 to 65 requiring ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, to sell the app or face a United States device ban. The bill's future in the Senate remains uncertain. So that's what they're waiting on now. So it's got to be voted on by the Senate. Then it goes on to be signed by the president and it becomes law. All right, so the bill's future in the Senate remains uncertain with calls for hearings before any action. Representative Mike Gallagher insists it's not a ban, but a forced separation, citing national security concerns and privacy threats posed by TikTok. However, TikTok argues this violates free speech rights. The bill, named the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversaries, Controlled Applications Act. Wow, that's a mouthful right there. Mandates ByteDance to sever ties within six months or face removal from U.S. app stores. It also establishes procedures for addressing future threats from foreign-owned apps. The legislation raises questions about privacy, national security, and free speech in the digital age. So there you go, man. Uncle Sam is starting to limit things, starting to cut back on a lot of things that are out here man in the world and TikTok is one of them TikTok is one of them how you feel about that um on one hand you know I, I, I kind of get it you know you, you wonder what are they not telling us mm. you know mm. that's, that's what you really wonder like why do they think that that a foreign country is doing something underhanded with this export mm. So, what, you know what I'm saying? What is the research showing them? So, they're saying, you know, it, it's something that they, that they limit in their country, which is not our country. You know, our kids have access to anything, which is a problem. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is a problem. But you wonder what the real data is. Well, and then, right, you know how we are, man. We get in here, we put our 10 4 koofies on, and it gets us thinking a certain way. And it's like, well, okay, well, if they're saying that foreign countries are using TikTok against America. Because basically what they're saying is that the kids are being programmed by the algorithm that's being done because of this this company that also has ties to China, right? They're programming the kids to it. So why wouldn't that be the same with American companies just program? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, I mean, there are American-owned social media platforms as well so they they aren't programming people with the algorithm algorithm as well so my thing is if you're going to ban one you're going to ban tiktok you have to ban them all because all of them use the same methodology yeah but it's you know kind of I mean? like what it's kind of like don't you talk shit about my friend i talk shit about my friend. <laughs> that's, you know how it that's how it is you know <laughs> Don't you ruin our kids? We're gonna ruin we, our kids. We we can ruin our They're kids. They're gonna shove junk food and garbage <laughs> in their brains. You can't do it, China man. So I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's, I got you. I got you. So, uh, but my thing about even with this, I mean, not to be all you know, but it's like you can't. You you gotta always go back to the foundation of this country. Mm-hmm. This country was founded on dishonesty, blood. Theft. But well, and look, there's there you go. You. Honorable, and this this country is founded on just garbage, trash, mm. trash people, mm. trash practices. Mm. So, I mean, you can't Point. you can't get on your high horse in America. You just get, we can black Americans we get on our high horse all day. Yeah, but this government, dude, you enslave people. Yeah, they're saying yeah, that- you're in concentration camps. Cool. Well, you and, and you got you got one of the zoners chiming in right now, man. Ray Askins saying, "Look at America bullying again to control what we see and hear, man." Ah, oh, man, it's getting testy in the, in, the, in the group chat out there, dude. 
Remember at one time, a lot of your news, honest news, you had to get it from the BBC. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you they give you what they want you to see. And once, and just, just like with social media, there's a lot of garbage on social, a lot of garbage. There's a lot of gems on there. There's things you see that you wouldn't see otherwise. Well, and if you watch uh, any... Or, you know, you follow anything on X or, you know what I mean? You got, you got, follow us or at Zone 16 Network on uh, X. And uh, what I see trending right now is they're saying that, okay, so when you go on TikTok, right, you see a lot of videos showing what they're actually doing in places like uh, Ukraine, what they're actually doing in places like uh, Israel and what's going on with Hamas. So some people are saying that, and I don't, want, I don't want them to come down on us, right? We know that alphabet police out there might come down on us, but they're saying that, hey, they're saying, hey, if they can affect people's mind by showing them what's going on with these platforms, you know, we got, we got to shut it down, especially if, uh, you know, the powers that be, the, the big they, the big them. Whoever gonna, they are. Yeah, are going to lose control. You know, lose that's control. what I'm saying. And it's like we can, we can honestly say it. And, I, and, you know, we don't even have to say our lifetime. We can say within the last 10 years, mm. we've seen the, the landscape of media, of media output, Us? the mindset. Yeah. You've seen so much change. I mean, they've normalized so much. Mm-hmm. Well, you just figure, hell, Barack Obama was president. It hasn't been 20 years. Yeah. It is not, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Trump, the whole Trump phenomenon, we've watched him become a different dude than what we saw as kids. Mm-hmm. Like, that ain't the same guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're disrupting and you're limiting what a nation can have, the information you have access to, that's that's a deadly tool. That's, that's deadly. That's deadly. I mean, you can just go back in history with Randolph, uh, was it Philip Randolph Hearst? Yeah. He controlled the media. Mm. You control the media, mm. you control the country. Queen. You control, you know, you control power. Yeah. So if you're limiting something that can come in, and we're in an age where everything is opening up, mm-hmm. all information, all access, and you're trying to close it off, mm. why, why, why you, why do you, why do you give a damn? Well, here, here's here's another thing, Damon. All right, I'm about to play it for the zoners right here, right. Our other story that also talks and uh, deals with uh, the change that we see going on in America, and can the powers that be, the big they, deal with? Now, what uh, you just had a chance to witness right there, Zonas, was uh, now for a lot of the, a lot of the world right now, Damon. We are in the month of Ramadan, mm-hmm. yeah, and then, uh, we had the uh, Muslim faith off Ramadan prayers right dead smack in Times Square. All right, now you talk about change in America, that is definitely change right there. All right, Muslim worshippers gathered in New York's Times Square to mark the start of Ramadan, performing the Taraway prayers against the backdrop of LED billboards. Some displayed Palestinian flags in solidarity with Gaza. Ramadan is observed with fasting from dusk to, I'm sorry, from dawn to dusk. I had it backwards there, right? From dawn to dusk, followed by communal evening meals. Organizers projected prayers from the Quran while others highlighted awareness of global issues, including Gaza. Nearby, individuals showed support for Palestine. The event occurred amid ongoing tensions following attacks by Hamas, triggering conflict with Israel, resulting in casualties on both sides. So, I mean, we talk about change in America, right? And, And then the change that social media platforms could bring about and you know a lot of people see this right now it's, it's trending on tiktok it's trending on x and you know when's the last time you saw people of the muslim faith Damon, take over Times square and do something like it. yeah I, yeah right you know but that and, goes back to what you're saying about 
you know what I'm saying? Stuff you wouldn't see. You know what I mean? It must mm-hmm. be an influence. Because it's possible we, w- we would have seen this. No. It wouldn't have been news. Well, the thing is, and here's the thing, man, Zoners, I want you to I want you to test it out for me, Zoners, man. If you go ahead and you put in your search engine, whatever you're using, Google, Safari, this, that, and the third, uh, when I saw it on TikTok, and then, I mean, my fault, on, on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, and then I went to the search engine to find some stories to read up on it and verify some things on it, you only really see foreign websites promoting this. They're not really talking about this on major platforms. <laughs> so this this doesn't fit the algorithm. This doesn't fit the agenda that the uh, popular news media platforms that, that any of the, the big, big media platforms support. Uh, you don't see them. You know, you see it on Al Jazeera, stuff like that. I saw it in the, uh, the Israeli Times. I saw it in the Hindu Times out there. Uh, but you didn't see a lot of major news outlets, a lot of major media outlets covering this. This this is something that you would hear from the from the uh quote unquote crazy dude in the barbershop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you would hear this you would hear about this from him. You hear everybody, oh you go, you crazy man, you talking crazy. Mm-hmm. And but nowadays you can go on you can go on social media and you can validate whether or not the crazy dude in the barbershop Telling the truth or not. Mm. So, like a lot of information about Israel and how it makes the history of Israel, a lot of people didn't know it. Yeah. Like, like, like this would be just be this be hundred percent honest about it. A lot of Americans, especially Black Americans, because you know that's the community we, we're from, mm-hmm. they don't talk about it because it doesn't really affect us. But when you start reading, you learn about it. You're a little more passionate. You know, you're not as apt to just say, "Hey." Okay, this is just some news they're talking about. You may some more may side with the other side. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Clearly, yeah. America, they're allied with Israel. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people once they learn more about it, they may be a little more. They may, they may, may be inclined, maybe yeah. inclined to, to join the other side of the cause. Out there. So you know, mm-hmm. when you when you're seeing this and and and, and they're there tried and true propaganda about Islam mm-hmm. and Islamic people in the Middle East if, when, it, when it stops working and I think that's part of you know what you're saying it's, it's kind of I think I think uh, they, need to, they need to work on their left <laughs> you know well, what I'm saying and just, just looking up other stats here man uh, it says that uh, TikTok has 170 million users in America so that's that's a lot of minds being influenced mm-hmm. a lot everybody of everybody ain't making videos in. yeah and you know well and I, I mean they're making videos about stuff like this as well you know what I mean yeah. talking about how you know how the uh, the Muslim faith took over Times Square and you know and did it peacefully it was you know cause you gotta you know when you think about, and unfortunately, right, things like events like 9-11, so you think about the Muslim fate tied in with New York. It's kind of like, you know, hero, anti-hero type of deal there between them, you know, antagonist, protagonist type of deal. And to see them peacefully uh, gather and and worship is, is a good thing. It's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm looking at the rundown, man. We had one of our zoners out there broke it on on Tuesday when it happened. But we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it a little more in depth there. Derrick Henry. Baltimore Ravens have been making some moves on it. So, hey, if you want to talk Baltimore Ravens, you want to talk homegrown sports talk, stick around. Uh, Damon and I are going to holler at this liquid lunch real quick, clear our throat, and we'll be right back talking football. Remember Wildcats? Football is oh, yeah. our game. Better than it's Diamond loaded. Ray. When Wesley Snipes. Let's play football. <laughs> Cody Hall. Football. <laughs> that was good stuff. I remember who I was in that movie.
Yeah, Flock Nation. Caw, caw. Let's go, Damon. Let's go. You ready? Always, always, Ready always. for Dark Henry, man. King Henry to come through here. Bash some brains in real quick. I mean, he may as well. I mean, look, he owes us after what he did. <laughs> after he what he's done yeah. to us. All right, man. Check this one out, Zoda's bad. On Tuesday, and they actually they're actually having the press conference. I think it's like right now. Uh Harbaugh and uh Derek Henry are talking about it, man. But star running back. Derek the King Henry. Does he he shares that with LeBron? That's actually a little weird there. I had never thought about that before, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I mean, they call LeBron the King too, right? So Derek King Henry has secured a lucrative two-year contract with the Baltimore Ravens worth up to $20 million with incentives. All right, and about $9 million of that is fully guaranteed for 2024, making him one of the NFL's top paid rushes. Henry signing follows close negotiations during the trade deadline, finally bringing him to the Ravens. Because remember now, when, they, when the Ravens were making their run last year, they were talking about getting them right before the trade deadline. And I think he would have... If they would have sealed the deal, man, it, it could have been could have been a little crazy out there. Now, uh, despite concerns about his age and career workload, Henry's consistent performance, including over 1,000 rushing yards in five of the last six seasons. So he's, he's gotten over 1,000 yards in five of the last six seasons. Last year, he led the Titans in rushing and led the league in rushing with 1,100 yards, man. So uh, this definitely makes... Derrick Henry, a valuable addition to the Ravens with his powerful running style and ability to break tackles. Henry remains, Henry remains a force to be reckoned with on the field. Man. King Henry. I hope he has some. Well, let's all hope he has something left in the tank. A lot left in the tank. Well, two years, I, give us two years. I'm good with that. Hey man, I don't, I don't see him declining any. Like I said, the last. Five years he's been he's been rolling a thousand yards. So you know we're getting a, we're gonna get at least seventy or eighty yards out of him a game. And then there's gonna be one game where he's gonna pop one, man. You know he's gonna he's gonna give you that 150, 175 out there. So look, I put it I had to put it up on the screen, David, because you uh definitely uh brought it up, man. And that was that was an awful time, man, in, in Raven history. When we see it right here, man, I had to break it down in pictures because the video, the, I don't want the video to be choppy. But how King Henry just abused Earl Thomas out that thing, man. Turned him into his little personal shield. <laughs> it stiff armed him. Whipped the ass in that playoff game, man. Whip. That might have been the most depressing uh, Ravens loss. Man. Next to the one when uh, <laughs> Steve McNair. Lost was him. old and, and rusty. Look at the smile on Henry's yeah. face right there. Look at the smile on his face as he busts that run. It was disrespectful. He was out there. He looked. He looked like a big kid beating the boy. <laughs> his shirt, his stomach was out. His stomach out. Yeah, his shirt was too small for him. <laughs> like God, like, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, we we all have gotten our hors d'oeuvres and got the <laughs> drinks and buffalo wings and I mean, you name it. We sat there to watch this guy. Come out and whip my ass. <laughs> and now, but Lamar I mean, didn't do too bad in that game. No, nah, no, nah, that's he had like five hundred some odd yards, but it just it was nothing they could do because at by that point, you know, Derrick Henry had rolled. He almost had hundred yards that game. I want to see like one ninety, couple touchdowns. He threw for a touchdown in that game. It felt like they gave up the twin. Yeah, they just gave up. Yeah. Just like he literally broke their spirit. Beat us, beat us up, beat us up, physically pounded us, and now. You know, with the, with the Ravens' defense, and this is what we do. So, you know, the Ravens have already had a 2,000-yard rusher in Jamal Lewis back in the day, and now add another one to the fold. Let's go, let's go, man. We want Derrick Henry to go for two grand so we can have we can have two 2,000 rushes in our, in, our, in our legacy out here, man. Ready. I want to see him run over Patrick Queen. <laughs> That's what I want. Well, that's the, that's the you're, you're a little early, but that's the I next know. one that we're about to get to, man. The free agents and everything out here. But think about this, man. Think about the even though that they uh, have a rivalry, think about how the Ravens have basically throughout the course of their history pillaged the Titans roster for veteran players. Now, you know what I mean? You talk about Steve McNair. They took Steve McNair. They took Derek Mason. 
right? Okay, Joe. You, you, I'm you, just saying they you, they they, they took man, King he, go, they dude. took King Henry, it's you not, know. Yeah, this is not a robbery. <laughs> they took King Henry, <laughs> so the robbery ended when we beat them and won the Super Bowl 24 years ago. It's, it's a lot of ex Titans that come here. You know this robbery. This and, robbery and, and continue to do their thing. That's all I'm saying. Are the Orioles and the Yankees robbery? That's all I'm saying. No, well, I mean, not at this point, because the we're not wrong. Yeah, the Orioles don't win anymore. No, that's what <laughs> so, the, our players would leave and go to the Yankees. Mm. They would go to a, a better run franchise that won championships. So the Titans players they leave and go to a better, a b- franchise, a better franchise. They win championships. Okay, so right, it's not a right. robbery, is what I'm saying. All right, I take that. So yes, he went to the big show. Is what happened. He, he went to the majors. <laughs> He left the minors, even though he beat up on us. Yeah. They still didn't win the Super Bowl that year. Okay, all right. Now, now this they, is because they, they're the minors. They triple A ball. Yeah. Now this is what Damon was alluding to earlier. Zoners, right there. Boom. You see it up on the screen, man. Raven free agency has been rather quiet, Damon. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, you know, for for the people that are out there, that this is what they follow, and they they want to see who is going to get signed and who's going to go where. We've had more depart. So, are these ra- did these Ravens depart for better franchises? <laughs> you got Patrick Queen gone to the. I'm not even going to say the name of the team. The first two, I can't even say the name of the team. Patrick Queen and Geno Stone left in the division. So that lets you know what the Ravens think about you if they're going to let you go, and you go in in the division. They, these guys are trying to get some comeback. Patrick Queen and Jesus. That's ultimate disrespect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgan Moses was traded. Now, I think the Ravens traded the wrong tackle. Prove me wrong. I think they should have got Stanley up out of here. He's still under contract. (sighs) He's still under contract. I didn't know that. I thought, yeah, I'm with you. I didn't know Stanley was, but they made him um, restructure. Yeah, they made Stanley restructure his contract. All right, then you see Gus. Gus went and joined Harbaugh's brother. So, all right, Gus Gus is out of here. He went to Los Angeles with the Chargers. And then uh, Ronald Darby and Devin DuVernay up on the screen. They became (laughs) Jaguars. (laughs) And they released Odell Beckham. Yeah, and then the the last night, right before midnight, they said, Odell, get your ass out of here, man. Three bad knees. I mean, the guy has three bad knees. What did we expect? He had to go. He had to go. Yeah. Couldn't keep him around. I like his attitude. I like his attitude. Now, with all of the departures right there, the Ravens signed Derrick Henry. They re-signed Justin Matabike, had to bring him back. They re-signed Nelson Aguilar, and then they re-signed Malik Harrison. Oh, okay, old oh, bullet, bullet, bullet leg, yo. Gosh, remember he got shot in the leg? He missed a missed a season because, or like yeah. half a season because he took a bullet wound. Malik Harrison out there had to bring him back, man. So they're going to look like. I trust the rig. I trust them. You, what they doing? I do. I do. They do, they doubled down, so the Ravens led the lead. In rushing last year, and they're doubling down this year, Damon, and bringing in Derrick Henry, who led the league in rushing. <laughs> so it's like they're going to run over everybody. They got to keep Pat. If they keep Patrick Ricard, now imagine that. Yeah. Think about that. That's like 600 pounds a man Power. that you're going to have That's to stop. You know what I mean? You got, you got Derrick Henry in the eye formation behind Pat Ricard. Coming downhill, running ISO, running running inside zone, something like that. Whew. And what's lost on people about Lamar Jackson is how powerful he's <laughs> been. You know mm. Oh, look, yeah. look, look. The zone is out there saying they said Henry Reddy said he showed up in a purple suit. We're going to see him there. Now, imagine, my gracious man, just think about his own. He, when, when the Ravens wear the all blacks, Derrick Henry going to be out there in that all black. With the black visor, the black arm sleeve. Hopefully, he wear black. He gonna look like he gonna look like Darth Vader or somebody out there. You know, gigantic. And you know, I can't think of anyone in our lives I've ever wanted us to beat as as badly as the Chiefs. Like, yeah, they got to go down. There, we're we gonna run to them. Beat them. Yeah, we got to beat. Them. I actually, and look because. That guy, Nick Wright, I haven't watched since they lost the AFC Championship. I haven't really watched a lot of the talking heads, talk the sports, because I know 
that Nick Wright and Acho were going to come across my timeline and I was going to see something that they said about Lamar and about the Chiefs. Because, you know, Nick Wright just likes – he's got – he won't take Patrick Mahomes' balls out of his mouth. So this oh, – it's, I mean, it's just terrible. It's 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 awful, man. It's awful, and I I just I haven't watched that stuff because uh you know, they they got to go. They got to go down. The Chiefs have to go down bad. Like if we play them, I want to see thirty four seven type of victory. You know what I mean? How how the Ravens beat the Giants out there. Shout out to T Sam's. Well, I, we saw you in the chat out there. You know, for all the Giants fans out there, we got to beat them when they have Kelsey. Mm hmm. Yes, before he we leaves, kill, yeah, before he retires, because he's getting old. He's getting a little long in the tooth up there. He talking marriage and everything. He got Taylor Swift and all this nonsense. I want somebody. I don't wish any injury on anybody. Not saying that, <laughs> but I would love somebody to just knock him on his ass. Hey, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, take your body, and everybody take a knee because they think it's a, like I want to see that. I don't want the man injured. I don't want that happen. But I would like to see him get knocked out cold, <laughs> and I want her to be in the audience when it happens. What it happens, all right, hey, and I want her to have the Birdman hands, <laughs> but not on a celebration, out of anxiety. Mm. That's what I want to see happen to me. Mm. Damon wishing bad on the Chiefs. I'm not wishing there. injury. <laughs> I am wishing failure. And oh man, never mind. I'm, it's I'm, all good. I'm, it's all good. Man. Hey, look, Zonas. When we come back, we are talking. Migo said Dunbar. Did you hear about that, Damon? Migo said Dunbar. And then the conversation for the day zones. Man, we got a couple of wild ones, man. Nick Saban. And the criminal mastermind suburban mob. Wild stuff. We'll be right back. school alumni out there that are watching this man the other day you guys got to be part of something amazing out there man on tuesday georgia rap star offset along with uh downtown locker room damon so dtlr and the baltimore police department surprised the students at dunbar high school with a celebration for their great attendance and academic success success almost choked to death right now offset met with students Gave them gift cards and other things like that. And uh, he did all of this before uh, he did his performance in Silver Spring later on that night. What's the what's the, what's the showcase down there uh, in Silver Spring? What is what is the place called? The venue, the film? Yeah, the film. The, the, ah, yeah, yeah. So I, I wonder if that's where he was. I wonder if that's where he was. He doesn't seem like a Fillmore artist. Fillmore type of guy. 930 no. Club, maybe. But that's not no, Silver Spring. No. That's not Silver that's Spring. That's DC. Yeah. The, the Howard. The Howard. No, he, he's not there. He's more of a Verizon Center, but he wasn't. I mean, but they it wasn't a big concert. I don't know. I don't know a lot about the Migos. Oh, uh, well, they 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 were here. All yeah. their songs sound like <laughs> <laughs> they, they were here in Baltimore. Hey, uh, big shout out to Myron Saunders out there. I wonder if Myron was out there. I wonder if he was out there. You, you know, far. Yeah. Yeah, but we, you know what? Speaking of Dunbar, mm. of all the high schools in Baltimore. Always thought they had the coolest mascot. Ow. Uh, no, the whole, the whole Spain. Yeah. The poets. Poet, always, the poets. I always thought with that was owl cool. and everything. Mm. I like that Burke. The uniform, just the fact you said poets on there, that was always cool. Yeah. They, I, they colors, all of that. Yeah. I've, I've always been a fan of uh of the burgundy and gold. Yeah. 
And so uh, it's always been always been a favorite of mine. Always been a favorite of mine. All right, so hey, Ray Askins is saying that he was at the Fillmore as long as we yep. he was at the Fillmore. All right, so look, we talk about being a fan of that burgundy, Damon. <sighs> a lot of people are a fan of this burgundy out here and this guy. Listen to this nonsense. All, all the, the things, things I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast, and uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their uh, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? Listen to this nonsense, man, from this guy out here. <laughs> this guy, man, Nicholas. Is that his real name, Nicholas? I wonder if his real name is Nicholas Sadie. He doesn't deserve you even respecting him enough to call him by his whole name. <laughs> Nick. Now, I went out. Now, the zoners, we want y'all to chime in today, man. We talk we talk of sports and the effect that, you know, the last half hour of the show, man, and uh, the, the effect that it has on America. And how, honestly, I have to say it like this, man. How dare this guy say that? He's, as a college football coach, this guy has made, I looked it up, Damon. Nick Saban's net worth is $70 million. $70 million. What's that? I don't know. Oh, I know what it is. Uh -oh. Yeah, I got it. I turned it off. That was uh, when I was looking up uh, the Nick Saban nonsense. That was a video that I was that I was looking at. But um, yeah, this guy's worth seventy million dollars. And then they said in twenty twenty three, he purchased a Ferrari, Damon, a Ferrari, and pulled up on campus in it. <laughs> so he and this guy is complaining about people wanting to get their bread. He owns an auto dealership, uh, Dreams Motor, that is it, that is valued at almost seven hundred million dollars. But he doesn't want paid athletes out here. And here's the dirty little secret that we all know about, Damon. Alabama's been paying athletes. All them schools, like, a bunch of them schools. Can, can we can we say that the SEC? I mean, that's what they're known for. You know what I mean? We know we know about the Pony Express. Those guys were getting paid. You know, <laughs> these guys were showing up on campus with with you know Chargers and Camaros and all of that kind of stuff in the eighties, and you know not going to class. I mean, it's it's been going on, and it was all about the bad guy, as they say. And it's also, I mean, it's not that big of a secret that. You got guys who get into SEC schools that can't get in other schools. They can't get into schools, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they are SEC schools that couldn't be in the Big Ten because their academic standards are too low. Mm, and no mm. one wants to talk about that kind of stuff also. Mm, and then, look, look, we got Zonas out here pointing out that, look, he's been the highest paid state employee in Alabama. <laughs> and he has, the, he has the nerve. He has a lot of nerve. Yeah, yeah, you know, this this guy has the nerve, man, to complain about people. You know, I disagree. getting paid. Yeah, but you know, I disagree with y'all on the whole paying NIL. athletes. No, whoa, the NIL thing. Okay, I'm I'm all all or nothing. Get a minor league, be professional. Stop mm -hmm. playing this game. Stop because they saw they jump through all these hoops, all these hoops, so they don't have to establish a true professional farm system. Okay. Oh, they come through all these hoops. I'll take so that. To keep these young men from making money. A lot of these guys, they don't want to go to college. They're going to play football. That's what they're going to Alabama for. They're not going there to get, to get a degree in criminology. They're going for football. Mm. So if, if, they, if they are what a four star, was what are the stars they are coming to high school? What are, what are the stars they use? Yeah, that's it. Four star, four five star. star. Yeah. You're a five-star recruit coming out of Birmingham, Alabama, and you're a cornerback. Get drafted by whatever new, the New Orleans Saints or the New York Giants, their farm system. 
Give that boy his money. Mm. Give him his $5 million signing bonus. Let him toil away. In the minor leagues? Yes, in whatever little raggedy town in Mississippi. <laughs> They you know can give saying? they can give other cities uh teams the teams to watch. Same like I do you want even better. I'm gonna do you want even better. They want to develop NFL overseas so much. Send them overseas. Send them overseas, like send the NFL minor you, league overseas. They had NFL Europe. Yep. They already had it. Yeah. So have the Barcelona Dragons, have that again. But pay them their money. Yeah. Give them their money. And then when they're good enough to play stateside or the big show, the NFL, yeah. then they come back. The, the model is there. Hockey, baseball, it's there. So it's not like this is something that's foreign. Mm-hmm. We're from Baltimore. We know of guys who were drafted to the majors. Mm-hmm. Straight up drafted. Out of high school. I straight out of high school. <laughs> straight out of high school. straight up got their money. <laughs> yeah. They got their money for real. Yeah. I ain't, we ain't talking about they got a little bit of center of car. No, they got their million. And they played in the in AAA ball mm-hmm. for five years. It's whatever amount of time. Before they came to the big show. Well, and I mean, here's something else that you can also uh, use, uh, you know what I mean, in the, in the argument, right? So they, a lot of people are against them saying, hey, well, these guys get free tuition, free room and board, you know, blah, 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 blah. Why should they be getting paid? You know, because, uh, you know, just like other scholarship students, they got everything that the scholarship provides for. But unlike the other students, you know, you don't have two million people tuning in to watch the scholarship engineering students. Uh, right. Let's let's say for what they're doing, and then you know, what I mean, that's bringing it. I mean, can we think of the revenue that's been driven by guys like? And we're talking Alabama football, and we just got we just got an Alabama football player. You know, what I mean, King Henry, uh, Ozzie Newsom has been here for quite some time being part of the uh, Ravens organization. A bunch of Alabama yeah, yeah, a bunch of boatload of Alabama. You know, Modern I, Hump, Modern Hump. <laughs> yeah, so I mean and, and these guys have helped pave the way for you know what what is going on with with Alabama down there and with them being the biggest and, and being the biggest draw out there and making all of the money that they're making. So uh you know that's that's the other side to that coin out there is that well you know yeah although they are scholarship athletes like other or scholarship students like other students out there, their extracurricular activity also helps to build the school. You and yeah. I remember. You and I remember what happened in University of Maryland well, that's why I said after Joe Smith went number one. But we it, saw new buildings. We saw new dorms pop up. We saw a new basketball arena pop up. Enrollment increased, and we also saw them basketball players were living there. Yeah, when yeah. He, when he wasn't a star. Yeah, you that's saw how they true. were living and what they were driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're we going. This is why I, I, I don't believe in paying college debt. I don't believe in it. Sheesh. No, I'm, I think there should be a minor league. Okay. I think they should go straight up and down from amateur to pro. I believe this whole paying college athletes is a farce. Okay. And it's, and it's a way for them to keep. It's, 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 it's the okie doke. It's the okie doke because. If you have a guy that's talented enough, mm-hmm. he will be drafted. He will be drafted to the majors. So why well, I mean, around in college? You know, football is a little different because your, your body still has to develop a little bit in I football. Mean, I, I mean, yeah. they go to war. Nah, that's true. Get your ass shot off somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to be more developed. I yeah. mean, come on. Hockey. You got to be even bigger and stronger for hockey. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Baseball. Okay. I, I can't, I'm saying, give them the opportunity to be a professional athlete immediately. If they don't want to do it, go to college. We wouldn't have the disparity. We wouldn't have this bastard like Nick Saban making all these millions driving around the Ferraris talking crazy if you just made him pros. Because mm. he wouldn't be a name. You know what I'm saying? You figure like the, the best, um, you know, traditionally – you had good uh, college baseball programs like uh, like Arizona State, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can't name the head coaches. I can't. I mean, <laughs> maybe Spark Jones can. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They don't have rock star head coaches, but they are college baseball pro- programs that are traditionally powerhouses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the, but the big show is Major League Baseball. And some of us, we watch the College World Series. We watch it. But – 
it's I hate people comparing it to slavery. I, I hate that analogy. Oh no no no. No, no I'm saying. just I hate people do that. But you do have some old Jim Crow share crop situation going on with people like Nick Saban. How dare he fix his mouth to say they only going to get paid? Like, dude, you get millions of dollars. <laughs> the coach again. Like, you sound crazy. Yeah. And, and and even when you have him, dudes like you have him being able to say that, and people are almost like applauding him because they refuse to let these these young men be pro athletes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let them be pros. And I don't remember exactly. It works in certain ways. Whereas with Major League Baseball, you can defer your draft stats and go to college. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. But you I have the you. opportunity. You know, it's, it's all, you know, they, and I feel like they, they throwing the, the NFL, the, the NIL deals, them being able to do that, I think it's, I think it's, I think they're throwing peanuts at them. Mm, well, it's just placating. That's it. Our, our last story of the day uh, definitely isn't throwing peanuts, man. You talk about running off with millions, man, like Nick Saban out here, Damon. How about the suburban mom, Damon, that is, uh, yeah, she's rich now. <laughs> she's got a lot and a lot and a lot of money out there. All right, now, Michelle Mack, a California mother stands accused of orchestrating a nationwide shoplifting ring that stole millions of dollars worth of merchandise over more than a decade. So she's been doing this for longer than 10 years. According to California's Department of Justice, Mac and her husband, Kenneth, were found with over $300,000 worth of stolen makeup and products in their home. Mac allegedly funded airfare, hotels, and car rentals for a group of women to go out and steal goods from all around the country. Uh, which she then sold at a discount on her Amazon Marketplace storefront. Uh, You see it right there at the bottom, man, the online makeup store. And that group, that it was a gang, man, known as the California Girls. The group targeted outlets across more than a dozen states, including uh, Lens Crafters, Sephora, and over 230 Ulta stores. Police discovered a mini store in Max Garage filled with stolen beauty products and designer items. Attorney General Rob Bonta filed 140 felony charges against Mac, her husband, and seven others, Damon, involved in this organized crime retail theft ring. All the defendants have pleaded not guilty. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. This is why we're talking about this, always. Because if you paid attention out here, man, over... And especially on all uh, social media platforms, we, we're talking about TikTok today. In the algorithm lately, Damon, you see a lot of people blaming all of the smash and grabs and all of that kind of stuff on young black men, on the homeless of all people, right? In San Francisco, they blamed a lot of the crime on the homeless. Damon, here in Baltimore, they blamed the closing of the Target in West Baltimore on... You know, just mm-hmm. random neighborhood retail crime. And now we see that, no, there's actually someone organizing this, paying people to go out here to do it. And it wasn't the homeless individuals or the young people of color, like they say. It's a suburban mom and her husband. Organizing, stealing, boosting, this boosting. Makes, this makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. Come on. When they, they talk, right, they tell us to take our tinfoil koofies off. But then I ain't putting on. This, we have stuff, real, we man. have stuff like this that pops up all the time. Come on, man. man come I on. Ain't, I, this ain't even a conspiracy. Nobody <laughs> robbed land like white man. Come on, man. <laughs> the biggest thieves mm. in the history you of the like world. Sound like Dick Gregory right there. <laughs> they are. Nobody steal like a white man. Nobody. Mm. Nobody. Mm. Nobody. He will steal your shit. And put it in contract that now it's his. <laughs> Come on, man. There you go. That's you know what I'm saying? You'll suburban get a black, mom. Man, man, you'll get, a, you'll get a, a group of black girls in the makeup section in Nordstrom. They be following them around like, like they the jailhouse gang or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and come find out the California girls was in there stealing right under their noses. And then reset selling it back to you. Yeah. Selling it back to you on Amazon. What, what, what movie is that when the Brother says, it's, matter of fact, is this, this book was still by the door? 
no one pays attention to a brother with a broom. With a broom, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Spook sat by the door, yeah. Man, I go in, you you go in like a Marshalls or whatever, they following you around like you, you know what I'm saying? Well, you almost got, like, dude. Public enemy number one. I can buy any of this shit in here if I want. Like, why are you harassing me? Why are you following me around? I'm looking at, I'm looking at box of briefs and socks. (laughs) You follow me around, you know what I'm saying? And meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, this white, oh my God, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you almost called out her name. <laughs> she over there robbing you blind. <laughs> Got a whole smash and grab yeah. ring going on out. <laughs> it's just like it's just like drinking and driving. You know what I'm saying? They harass these black men. They harass black men constantly every weekend. Sorry about that microphone. You know what I'm saying? And then I don't even remember they uncovered a few years ago about this this epidemic of, of white women. Who are drinking and driving. Drink, drinking during the day. <laughs> getting 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 day drunk with and their homegirls. Going out and crashing. Yes. With their children with them and everything else. But meanwhile, they harassment. This incenses me, man. Look, ain't nothing, <laughs> You're triggered. It's triggering. Yeah, for real, man. It, because you know how long we've been harassed by law enforcement. Absolutely. And we are not criminal dudes. Yeah. Yeah. And just 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 the, the, the insult of being in retail stores and they following you and everything else. And, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These suburban people in Saban, they gone from Nick Saban insulting us to, to, to the old white lady, Michelle Mack. I'm going to be one better. Man, look, you have children. We all, we all, a lot, of, a lot of us, you know, have children. I can always remember being in like the toy section and it's always some white dude with male pattern baldness in the gut and, <laughs> and it's like, like he doesn't have a kid with him and it's like you know, one time this just ha- actually happened he's calling somebody else like yeah they got the Megatron blah 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 I'm like dude come on man <laughs> leave this for the kids yeah, you know because you know they're buying it to resell it mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying that's the only reason mm-hmm. so who was to say they weren't thieves Cause it's easy to do it. Just like just like a black man with a broom, he can walk around. Cause he's just a janitor. A white woman, of course, she's not stealing. She's not taking anything. Of course, you know it. Crazy stuff out there, Zonas. Crazy stuff. Bizarro world, indeed, is where we live, man. Bizarro. Did yeah, Vanessa have a friend that was stealing? Got caught stealing. Yeah. From the Cosby Show, from the Cosby what we were talking show. about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was smoking cigarettes. I didn't. I didn't know she maybe, was boosted. Yeah, maybe, maybe. yeah, I thought it was smoking cigarettes out there. Yeah. All right, hey, before we get up out of here for the day, Damon, you know we got to talk about those born days, man, and the great indigenous original men and women uh, that celebrate today as a birthday. So, how did you know um, on Pi Day in 1933, music impresario? Quincy Jones' name was born in Chicago Southside. And then you see him up on the screen right there with the gold tooth smile. 1969 on Pi Day. Basketball player Larry Demetri Johnson, Grandmama. He's a Texas guy. I didn't know he was a Texas guy. Look at him. I didn't know that about Larry Johnson. I know he was old down South Country bumpkin like that. I thought he was from the city, man. I was going to give him New Jersey or something. Philly. No. Hey, Texas country bumpkin. Hey, grandmama. Grandmama. But hey. You don't make guys like that in New York City. Hey, well, on, on Pi Day, they are celebrating a birthday today, man. A, a great basketball player and an even greater influence on the music industry, Day. Good stuff out there. Quincy Jones, man, got a long, long line, long list of influence on the community out there. And then, I mean, you know, Grandma, the UNLV Rebels, man, running Rebels. You wore a dress. I know. I was about to say that. I was about to say that. We we talked about it the other day, man. He put that dress on and he got his own shoe. He got his own shoe. It was a good shoe. Yes. Yes, it was. It was Converse Grandma out there. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. You got a favorite Quincy Jones song or Quincy Jones associated thing? I, I mean, I would say uh, the fact that he helped bring about Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, the, you know what I mean? Getting 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 the Fresh Prince in our life—that was a good thing for Quincy Jones, man. Good thing. 
I mean, he was already, we already had the Fresh Prince, but the show produced the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Produced the show. I like Off the Wall, though. Ah, okay. I'm okay. a huge Off the Wall fan. Real quick, man. Ten seconds, fifteen seconds. What you got going on this strong, man? Anything important? Uh, twenty-first birthday party. Okay. <laughs> Obviously not for anybody. That I, you know, nephew type. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hey, Zonas, you saw us pop it up on the screen earlier. We just want to give another promo shout out, man, to Ark and Trolley. We will be at the Black Mall on Sunday. Pushing out those premium goods and services, man. Come on through on Sunday, man, and enjoy this strong weekend. And we'll see you black next week right here on Grand Day Baltimore with Damon and Joy. Open your sunroof. Ah, we out of here. Peace.